to start my puppy portraits with wet and wet techniques. So I'm taking my silver black velvet size 8 round brush and applying clean water all over to the body. I'm going to be working in sections here, painting the body first and then the head. My first color is Holbein Raw Umber and it's this kind of yellowish tone, almost like yellow ochre. And then I'm applying a little bit of sepia. All of this is softening out and blending really nicely on the glossy wet surface. It's important when you're working wet and wet to control how much water is in your brush by having a towel or paper towel handy so that you can be blotting your brush on the paper towel and that just helps control the amount of water and prevent any blooms from happening on the surface. When you're applying paint wet and wet like this, you want to make sure that it's pretty much pure pigment, that there's not a whole lot of extra moisture in your brush or this will cause unwanted backwash. So I've applied a bunch of fairly subtle colors to the body, raw umber, some sepia, a little bit of Payne's Gray for variety. And I'm staying fairly subtle with my values here, only applying darker colors around the edges of the body and where I see the fur going a little bit darker in value in my reference photo. As the paper begins to dry, you can start adding more wet and dry fur texture to the paper. I'm using the splayed bristles of my brush to produce a little bit of this fur texture. You can see how I've spread out those bristles and I'm just delicately feathering my brush across the surface. This is best done when the paper is completely dry so that your paint doesn't go anywhere. It stays put exactly how you put it down. But if you want to darken up broader sections of your painting, you can use more water in your mixture and apply broader brush strokes. When you're using transparent paint, it's totally okay to go over the top of what you've just painted. Now once again for the head, I'm starting with the wet and wet technique. I'm applying water all over inside of the ears, just avoiding the eyes for now. You'll want to make sure when you're putting down water that you're avoiding any areas that are going to have white in them since where the water goes, the paint will go. I'm using raw umber for my first color. Just a very light wash, wet and wet, within the ear and around the eye. When you're working on a light colored dog like this, you'll want to make sure you're working light to dark. So starting with your lightest colors and your lightest values and slowly and gradually building up those values in layers. Across the top of the head and on the other ear, I've mixed in a little bit of my Holbein sepia and of course being very careful around the eyes just to preserve those highlights. We'll paint the eyes separately. Across the top of the muzzle, I'm applying a nice light wash and then using more raw umber to balance out those yellowish tones from left to right. It's important to constantly be checking the left side and the right side of your painting just to make sure that you have good color harmony and a balance between your colors from left to right. Once that first wash is dry, I can begin to darken up the values slowly using more of a medium tone with my raw umber. And now I'm introducing burnt sienna to the mixture. This is more of a reddish brown and this is what I'm using to apply a second layer to the ears. You can see I'm painting around some of those wrinkles leaving those lighter in value. For the eyes I switched to my Lebenzin small stiff synthetic white brush. This has a wonderful tiny point that holds a really fine tip and is perfect for these details within the eyes. To create black you can mix sepia and Payne's gray and it produces a really beautiful convincing black. I have more of a watered down sepia across the top of the eyes and you can see I'm being careful not to cover the top portion of the eye socket since it's bulging forward a little bit. We want to produce the effect of a 3D skull shape underneath all of that fur and so any areas that are convex in the skull you want to make sure there's a highlight on top so that they look like they're protruding forward. Painting the eye takes some time, but you want to be just very careful to use a small enough brush so you can paint around those details like the highlights and the whites of the eye. For the ear, I'm going in with some more burnt sienna and some more raw umber, and again, just continuing to apply layers of color and value. Here I'm spreading out the bristles of my brush to produce more fur texture. And if you're interested in learning more about different ways that I paint fur texture, check out this video right here. I'm darkening up the tip of the ear and applying some more specific fur details towards the top. I like to start with these wet washes just to lay down color and value and then once those layers are dry I go back in wet on dry to produce more of that specific fur texture. For the muzzle I'm using a combination of my Payne's Gray and Burnt Sienna. This produces a really nice neutral tone 
And where you have more of the gray, it looks a little cooler. Where you have more of that burnt sienna, you'll have more warm tones. And I love this combination of warm and cool because in reality, you often see those transitions from warm to cool in real life, and it's rarely just a solid gray color. So within that muzzle, I'm laying down a base wash with those two colors, alternating between warm and cool depending on what I see in the reference photo. Around the bottom of the muzzle, there's this little white spot I'm careful to avoid, but I'm also overlapping that with some of my fur texture using the bristles of the brush. And then I paint the other eye again using my small, stiff, synthetic Lebenzin brush. This is perfect for those tiny little details. I usually like to start with the darkest portion of the eye, outline the highlight, and outline the white of the eye, and then fill it all in using the colors that I see in the reference photo. Oftentimes you'll see a shiny area in the eye that's just a little lighter in value. So here I'm filling that in with some blues and it looks nice and shiny. The white of the eye is rarely pure white, so I'm using a light gray to fill that in. And then extending some fur texture out and around the eye, darkening the eye socket to help it feel more fused to the head. So here I'm gently blotting with some of these darker colors around the underside of the eye and then extending more fur texture using the tiny tip of that brush. With this puggle, there's a lot of complex fur and I spent a lot of time just building up my layers and alternating between warm and cool colors, depending on what I see in the reference photo. Because the fur has little spacklings of black fur and tan fur all mixed together, it can be kind of easy to get lost in those details. Just be careful to start with your lightest values and work your way darker and you'll be really pleased with the complex look of the fur that's produced by this technique. Across the top of the nose I'm using my Payne's Gray with a dark wash and then going in with some water to lighten it towards the center. To help neutralize that bluish tone I'm introducing some burnt sienna in the mixture, creating the dark center of the nose and then filling it all in. Oftentimes in a dog's nose you'll see this little rim that's catching the light underneath each nostril so just watch for details like that. So you can see I'm leaving a little highlight especially under that right nostril and then filling in the center lighter. Coming back to the eyes, I'm going in with some more burnt sienna to balance out the reddish tones in the eyes and head and applying some really light fur texture with the spread out bristles of my Lebenzin brush. And you can see I sometimes will pull from bottom to top or top to bottom depending on which way I see the fur growing. You'll constantly need to adjust your brush strokes depending on the direction the fur is growing in your reference photo. And always be looking for that color harmony. So here I'm applying some more flat washes of watered down burnt sienna to help spread out those reddish tones throughout the face. Anytime you're adding bright pops of color like this, you wanna make sure that it's not all localized in one section. Make sure it's spreading out throughout the painting so that you have a pleasant spackling of color all throughout the painting. I'm painting on some whiskers. With the cold pressed paper, sometimes your brush will catch on the surface a little bit, but that's okay. We're working really tiny here. And then using the tiny tip of the brush, I'm adding a little bit more fur texture around the eye, darkening up the eye socket. This is all with my Payne's Gray. And then with that same Payne's Gray color, I'm darkening around the nose one more time with a couple of washes, filling in the nostrils darker, and just building up the details in the nose. That center line in the middle of the nose needs to go darker as well. And then for more details within the nose, I'm doing a little bit of cross hatching with the tip of my brush some vertical and horizontal overlapping brush strokes to produce that soft texture of bumps on the dog's nose. I'm filling in the nostril even darker, still preserving those highlights where I see the light catching on the tip of the nose and under the rims of the nostrils. And then around the muzzle, we need to start adding some more texture and more detail. So I'm building up layers here, trying to carefully draw on the wrinkles that I'm seeing in the face from the puggle and connecting the muzzle to the center of the face with more fur texture and more specific brush strokes. It's important to let your brush miss little areas in between each brush stroke so that you have highlights separating those dark brush strokes. This will help it look really detailed and really realistic. If you fill everything in with one tone, it's just gonna look flat. So be careful that you're preserving your highlights. Underneath the mouth, I'm just darkening one more time with a light wash of my sepia and then outlining the mouth with Payne's Gray, pretty pure in pigment here, and then using the tip of my brush to pull some texture out and away from the mouth, 
overlapping the body and helping the head come forward even more. I'm also adding a couple of little whiskers overlapping. Back to the muzzle, I'm building up more layers, producing those wrinkles within the muzzle, using small specific brush strokes working wet on dry, adding more fur texture and more of those dark wrinkles around the muzzle. This puggle is so adorable and I really enjoyed painting all of this detailed fur texture. And you'll notice as you continue to move your brush, you'll wanna move it in the direction that the fur is growing for a more realistic look on all of those details. Here I saw a little bit too much of a highlight, so I'm filling that in with more of a flat wash and then adding some more whiskers. Try to complete each whisker in one swooping motion. And oftentimes on dogs, the whiskers will be black, so they're easy enough to paint with just your Payne's gray. Use a really tiny brush, and you might wanna do some practice runs on a scratch piece of paper first, just to get the motion down. I'm adding another layer of tiny, fine little details of fur in the center of the head. And then along the top of the head, I'm gonna darken it up with some sepia using small parallel brush strokes, kind of moving like sunbeams across the top, dipping in the water and then softening all of that out and pulling it down to the center. The right side of the head needs a few more details. So I'm adding some more color to that right ear, trying to balance it out with the left. I'm using burnt sienna and sepia, going back to my larger brush for these broader brush strokes, spreading it out and softening edges wherever necessary and then adding a little bit of fur texture along the top of the ear. While that ear is still damp, I'm going in with my detail brush once again with Payne's Gray and adding specific furs right along the edge. Now because the ear is still damp, those little detailed brush strokes are softening out naturally into the paper, but the ear is drying enough that they're also staying put and not disappearing entirely. Understanding your timing with wet and wet is something that just takes a lot of practice and logging your brush miles, so to speak. So keep at it, keep practicing, and it will get easier and you'll start to recognize as your paper begins to dry what's gonna happen to your paint when you put it down. This just takes practice. So this is Payne's Gray that I'm using to paint these little stripes of fur within the ear. And you can see it's much more balanced now with the left side. I'm adding some whiskers overlapping that ear once the ear is completely dried, and a few more fine little details within the body to help balance it out so that it doesn't look too murky next to the very, very detailed head that we painted. So with all these little fur details, again, just observe your reference photo, and then once you're happy with your result, you can sign your painting, and there is our finished puggle.